Do you have water? No, I don't. Okay. Okay. No, I don't want to. Good morning and welcome to the study of the Word of God with Spring Valley Bible Church. I'm Phil McMillan. Uh, the first thing we need to do this morning is prepare for worship with prayer. Nothing we can say or do is worthwhile to God. We have to have His power to do His work. Know the greatness of your sin and remember that Christ has paid the penalty of them. Ask the Father for the eyes and ears of God the Holy Spirit so that you can understand His Word and moreover, Live it to the glory and revelation of Jesus Christ to others. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful morning and the opportunity to come together to worship you through the study of your word and in song and in prayer and in fellowship. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for the power of your spirit to understand all things, resolve all things, and to uh, move us forward uh, as a local body. Heavenly Father, we pray that all we say and do this morning might be glorifying to your son and edifying to this church. For it's in Christ's name that we pray, sir. Amen. So let's start off with our worship with a little song this morning, shall we, Brian? Yes, yes. Great is thy faithfulness, 216. I think we all are very familiar with. Great is thy faithfulness, number 216. <laughs> Scripture reading is Philippians chapter 2, 
starting at verse 12. So then, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without grumbling or disputing, so that you will prove your innocence to be blameless and innocent, children of God above reproach, in the midst of crooked and perverse generation, among whom you appear as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I will have reason to glory, because I did not run in vain, nor toil in vain. Okay, uh, once more, would you join us in singing 349, 349, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. the sermon coming up. Okay. We don't even plan it that way. Goodness. Uh, power, all power surely is thine, Lord. And uh, uh, so, uh, announcements. Uh, currently, right now, the uh, uh, Breakthrough Current Camp is coming to an end, and uh, they'll all be uh, headed back to their respective colleges. Uh, uh, so keep their travel uh, travels in prayer uh, that they all get back to where they're going safely. And uh, uh, prayer for speedy recovery for uh, Chris and Lori and <laughs> Brian and Larry, who, who uh, facilitated all the study as well as uh, cooked. <laughs> <laughs> Chief cook and bottle washer, as it were. Okay. So, uh, uh, and I'm sure next week uh, we'll at least get a short report from Chris and and uh, uh, hear how how the weekend went with the young people and how they continue to uh, uh, serve the Lord wherever they're at because of the training that they've gotten through the uh, youth ministry of Spring Valley Bible Church and. Uh, uh, so our our work is continuing on, even though we we don't have those kids around us anymore. Uh, they are continuing to serve the Lord and worship together, and that's a wonderful thing. Uh, keeping our prayers, of course, Herman and Judith, and and uh, uh, Herman's main uh, uh, recovery aspect is that he is uh, a little more stable in his legs and and strength, so that he doesn't have falling issues. And uh, want to make sure we keep praying about that to uh, avoid any further injury as he continues his speech therapy and other things. Uh, the Reesley family, uh, who was our current missionary of, uh, of designation for, or for uh, 
support uh, has uh, had some trouble this last week. There's, uh, as you, you might uh, know, the Reesley family basically runs an, uh, uh, an elder care facility in their house and, and they've expanded their house and they have something, I think, like 20 uh, older people that live in that house with them and they feed them and take care of them as well as teach them the Bible. And, and it's not just those 20 that they teach the Bible to. They have outreach to everybody in, in that uh, uh, town and surrounding area come in for Bible classes with them. And they're... To me, they are the most perfect picture of missionaries that we support. And we support some good ones. Uh, well, Brother Linus, he lives there. He's an indigenous missionary. Uh, but, uh, uh, the Reesleys, you know, they've gone down there three generations worth in this area of, of Mexico where they, they finally settled. They, they witnessed their, they, they, they evangelized their way south until they finally found a place they felt the Lord wanted them to stay. And that's near Hermosillo in, in, uh, off the Sea of Cortez in Mexico. And, uh, so at any rate, one of the, uh, parent, uh, one of the daughters of, uh, an elder person in the, uh, uh, facility decided that her mother was being abused in some way and, and is trying to get the DA to press charges against Grady, uh, for, for the abuse that uh, her mother apparently had. Her mother uh, herself said nothing happened, but uh, she's old, and they don't. They say, "Oh, we we don't have to believe her because she's old, and might have dementia or something." And uh, uh, the way the law in Mexico uh, is, especially for sexual crimes, you're pretty much guilty until proven innocent. And and, and uh, so, if charges come up against him, <laughs> the DA decides to press those charges. He's going to be in a really hard. Grady's going to be in a really hard spot there. And uh, so we, we really want to continue to be in prayer that the DA sees the right thing to do here and what's going on and, and doesn't ever bring charges against Grady at all. Uh, but uh, we'll keep you posted on how that might go uh, in the near future. Let's see. Uh, we are continuing for another a couple of weeks or so to take money for the Reese lease. We've got about $650 uh, uh, so far. And we want, uh, we'd like to get a little bit more money that we're, we're going to try and get to them through, uh, John Hintz and, and because he directly supports that ministry as well with his church in Tucson. So, uh, uh, that's where the, the, uh, uh, prayer outreach is going. Uh, let's see. Any, any fresh prayer requests today? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, continuing prayer for my wife's sister, Joanna. Mm -hmm. uh, she's the one with the aneurysm that they're not going to uh, uh, operate on, so it's a ticking time bomb. Now she has COVID uh, to add to that, so uh, and just uh, whatever God is doing and working in her life, um, pray that uh, she'll uh, recover from COVID and continue to be in stable health. Mm -hmm. Is she hospitalized or is she just no, at, no, home stays at home with COVID? At home with COVID. It's a good, better place to be than in a hospital. Yeah, yeah the hospital is the most dangerous place on earth. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I got uh, one praise and one prayer. Mm -hmm. The praise is that uh, my niece Lauren, that I asked to lift up in prayer, uh, has finally returned my text about uh, her the emotional turmoil that she's going through, and she needs help. So. Any continuous prayer is definitely, uh, you know, good step for her. And you've got a dialogue open with her. Yes, at least we've got a dialogue open. I <coughs> uh, share with her the link to the gospel, and hopefully she take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. And then the, another part is the prayer request about our church internet. Mm -hmm. Here I am in the search for a more reasonable, more reasonable, um, uh, let's say, web space. Mm -hmm. not, not just the, the recording of it, but the web space hosting pricing. Uh, so the, our contract with the current hosting in Arizona is going to end a year from now. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it's probably best to try to start searching now whether we're going to sign with them for three more years or we're going to actually get something closer uh, to uh, what we can afford and what the price range and also the, <clears throat> uh, the security would be as well. 
because monopoly is also a, a, an issue in the web industry. Uh -huh. I say you sign with the big names, they can take your channel down, they can take your content down at the same time too. Mm -hmm. Is that the risk we want to take? So please keep us in prayer about that. So that God direct us and how, how we need to do that. <coughs> uh, good, I just had an idea about that. I'll, I'll, remind me. I, remind me that I had an idea and see if I remember the idea. <laughs> yeah. That'll be God, the Holy Spirit at work. I can tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, then uh, let's, uh, um, for the offertory, we'll just leave the plate in the back today. And uh, anyone has a, a, a gift they would like to leave here, um, uh, drop it in the plate on the way out. And uh, for you online, of course, uh, go to our website at www.springvalleybiblechurch.com or .org and uh, contributions button on the landing page or if you go to listen and you're listening to a, 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 a previous sermon, there's a donate button there as well. Okay? Uh, the donate button is going to take you to a secure uh, PayPal link. You don't have to be a PayPal member or have any account tied to it. You can use a credit card or an AT, uh, a debit card and make a secure donation there. If you want to uh, make a donation for the Riesleys, at the very top of the of the uh, PayPal interface uh, is going to be uh, uh, a box where you can designate for Riesleys or you can designate for Liberty Youth Ministries. Or you can just make a donation and it'll go to our general fund. Our general fund is... Uh, um, a little less than it should be uh, for the last month, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll be able to bounce back on it and stay ahead of the uh, expenses here uh, without dipping into uh, Herman's retirement <laughs> to keep the doors open here. So, uh, let's see. If there are no other requests or praise, then let's pray. Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you for the opportunity to come before your throne of grace. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for, for your son's work that gives us the righteousness to do this and for his teaching that tells us to come before you and call you Father, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we just uh, uh, lift up all those on our prayer list, especially our pastor Herman and his wife, uh, Judith, and we just pray, Heavenly Father, for his continued re recovery and stability. We pray, Heavenly Father, for the Reesleys and Grady's current uh, uh, tribulations. We just pray, Heavenly Father, you would deliver him from that. We pray, Heavenly Father, for uh, uh, the work of your spirit and Julie's niece and, uh, and for their uh, uh, dialogue together. We pray, Heavenly Father, for all those prayer requests that were unspoken out there from, from people who turn tune in and people who might be watching now, Heavenly Father, they may not uh, uh, feel the need to put a notice on Facebook for their prayer requests, but we know that you know their prayer requests, and we pray that your grace would touch them and that they would want some more and see it full fullest in the work of your Son. We ask all these things, Heavenly Father, that you might use this little uh, body, uh, give us the <clears throat> income and grace that we need to uh, continue putting out your word. And we ask it in Christ's name, sir. Amen. Um, let's see. Well, shall we have a, one more song this uh, morning? Sure, sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, hymn 222. I think you all know very well. I played quite a bit lately. <laughs> uh, last year, 222 is day by day. Oh, my God. 
this morning with another short prayer. Heavenly Father, the eyes and ears of your spirit are the only way we can understand your word. For your ways are not our ways, Heavenly Father, but as we seek each and every day to conform our ways to yours, we pray that your spirit would teach us and guide us that we might do that. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that uh, yeah, he would reveal the truth of your word to us as we study. For it's in Christ's name we pray, sir. Amen. Great, so let's start with this, my verse to you in 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 5. And when I came to you, brethren, I did not come with superiority of speech or wisdom, proclaiming to you the mysteries of God. For I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in uh, fear and in much trembling. And my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and the power, so that your faith may not rest on the wisdom of man, but on the power of God. So this morning, we're going to have a test, right? <laughs> uh, don't worry, I'm not going to give it to you. You're going to give it to yourself. We're going, uh, we've talked a lot uh, uh, over the last year or so about living in, in your faith. And I've tried to impress upon you the, the way that we know that our faith is in the right place. When we say, I'm trusting uh, God, the Holy Spirit, to guide me to do the right thing in my life. Well, what's the right thing? We've got a really good, clear list in Galatians 5, chapter 9 of the things that, that God expects to see in our life. That's the production of God, the Holy Spirit, right? And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. And and against hey, such cheating, yeah, it's my cheat sheet. Well. That's my cheat sheet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we have these these uh, uh, indicators that we're doing the right thing. Our faith is in the right place when these are coming from God, the Holy Spirit, manifesting themselves in our our lives if we have our if, if we don't have those things in our lives we don't have our faith in the right place we're not living in the power of god the holy spirit that those are the indicators but i want you to uh, uh catch a, a glimpse of another indicator with a few verses that we're going to look at uh today uh, let's start with uh colossians chapter one uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 1, or excuse me, verse 25, just a couple of passages, a couple here from this passage, Colossians chapter 1, uh, starting in verse 25 of, of this church, and he doesn't mean that local church, he's talking about the church, the church universal there, 
of this church I was made a minister according to the stewardship from God bestowed on me for your benefit. Now, I want you to notice there that God did this work. He's not a minister of the of the church because a local body called him the minister, okay? He's a minister of God because God called him he was a minister, right? I, 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 I'm, I have, I'm, I'm not just a teacher. I am a teacher, a certified teacher and a principal in the state of Texas, but that isn't why I'm a pastor, right? I'm a pastor teacher. That's a two-part job. Right, I'm a, I, I have the function of pastoring this this flock as well as teaching this flock, and uh, that's the job that God gave me. It's not because anybody told me I was. It's because that was my my, uh, my communication from God through the study of his word. I'm not telling you God talks to me other than through the study of his word, right? That's the conversation we want to be in. God talks to us through his word, and we talk to God through prayer. That's where the, where the conversation flows. And um, so um, just as, as he's expressing here, I'm a, I'm a pastor of, the, of this church, this church universal. And uh, uh, to, the idea to say that, uh, well, Paul is my pastor, or Apollos is my pastor. They've already talk, talk, talked about that in 1 Corinthians, okay? Uh, the, the individual that God uses to teach you the word of God is somewhat inconsequential. The fact of the matter is God has made teachers, and if you are in the power of the Spirit, and that person is in the power of the Spirit, he's going to use his word to teach you, teach you the word. Okay, uh, uh, a pastor, as far as a local body goes, that's that's demands of the government to root, the way we have to operate. Okay, and uh, generally we operate under one pastor. A lot of churches have more than one pastor, or one pastor and thir- and, and you know five or six assistant pastors and twenty seven deacons and whatever their their government uh, uh, governing body tells them they need to have. That's what they're going to fulfill. Uh, hopefully they've they've made that governing body in the light of the word of God, but. Ultimately, it's doing the things in the devil's world that we're required to, to call ourselves a church. God makes his church. God appoints the teachers in that church. Uh, So uh, God bestowed on me for your benefit so that I might fully carry out the, your translation might say fully carry out the preaching of the word of God. But you'll notice the italics, uh, the italics on preaching of, if you if you've got that in wording in your in your translation, it's not in the original language. It says literally that I might fully carry out the word of God. Well, that's a that's a a, a heavy load. That's why one of the reasons it says, don't everybody become a pastor, <laughs> right? That you have to fully carry out the word of God, not just in teaching it, but in living it. And, uh, and he goes on to define exactly what that, that word of God given is that he's got to fulfill as a preacher. Uh, that I might fully carry out the word of God. That is the mystery which has been hidden from past ages and generations, but has now been manifested to his saints. Uh, it's pausing there at verse 24, we continue with verse 27. Uh, Excellent uh, recap of dispensations and, and, and the story behind the uh, ages and generations there from our first class this morning. Thank you, kid. And um, um, the, gener- the ages and generations past, they had a, a picture of what the Messiah had to be, that the Messiah was going to be coming to give them their, to, to pay the price of their sins, their redemption. He was going to buy them back. And we also saw a, a, a part of the uh, feature of the Mosaic law, when someone went into debt, they could pay it off with slavery or their family members could redeem them, pay the price for, for what they have done and get them in. There's three or four places in the Mosaic law where financial redemption is used as a picture of salvation, right? And um, uh, so it's now been manifested to a saints. all those hints, all those clues, the suffering servant, the, the uh, passages that said where the Messiah was going to be born, 
everybody heard those, but they didn't see the fulfillment of it. They heard it so that they would believe that God was going to do that, the gospel of the promise. We see those things and say, this is the ful- Christ is the fulfillment of that prophecy, right? But they didn't understand that as they were given those prophecies just to point them in the right direction with their faith that God would do the job that they had learned they could not do through the law. So uh, God has made uh, uh, manifested those things to his saints. Those are church age believers that are, are filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the only qualification to be a saint. Uh, the idea that uh, the, the Catholic Church has a, a, a monopoly on sainthood, you know, is, is uh, and they have a canonization process and, and uh, things that they're going to do before they call someone a saint. Well, the Bible tells us all of us who are filled with the Holy Spirit are saints. <coughs> Why is that? Because a saint is someone who is set apart. And when we are filled with the Spirit, we are set apart from this world. We're not no longer in this world. We're walking in God's world, right? Filled with His Spirit. And that's why we can do the supernatural things of love, joy, peace, patience, uh, patience, uh, gentleness, self-control. There, I didn't peek that time. Um, Let's see. So, striving to... Uh, uh, to whom God willed to make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. So it is spread not just to the revealed uh, 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 Ju- revelation that came to the Jews, which is, uh, but is now available to all of us, Jews and Gentiles alike. And that mystery, that glorious thing that was promised and is going to happen is Christ in you, the hope of glory. What we have Christ in us because of the indwelling of God the Holy Spirit, right? It's that it's that official seal of God the Holy Spirit that locks us into to our relationship of trusting Christ for the release from the penalty of sin, and uh, uh, that's the the confidence that we have that God is going to be glorified in our lives. That's why Jesus is called the hope of glory in this passage. Because we have the God, the Holy Spirit, to produce and imitate, to produce his fruits and imitate Christ in our life, we have the, the confidence, the hope in Greek, right? The confidence of glorifying God because Christ is in us through his spirit. Verse 28, we proclaim him, admonishing every man and teaching every man with all wisdom. Now that's the generic use of the word man there. Every man and woman, everybody, right? Um, um, every man com- uh, uh, with all wisdom uh, so that we may present every man complete in Christ, complete in Christ. This is the uh, reason why we're going we, we're gonna to keep working on this hope of glory. We proclaim Christ and admonish every man, tell them when they've got, when they're relying on their, not to rely on their own uh, works, but on the work of God and teaching everyone with all wisdom. Remember wisdom, this, this is a great definition. Wisdom is the work of Christ, guys. It, wisdom is, is knowledge in action. Wisdom is doing, having the ability to apply some information at just the right time in just the right way, right? And uh, um, I hate to keep repeating the same illustration. With, uh, inf- knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is not putting it in your fruit salad, right? <laughs> it's the application of that information that's important. That's when it becomes wisdom. And and in our case, we can call Christ the wisdom of God because God knew that we would never be able to re- redeem ourselves, to earn his righteousness. So he found a way through, the, through Christ becoming man and dying to pay the penalty of that sin so that we could still have that relationship with him. So that we may present every man complete in Christ. This is what we want as pastors and teachers in the, wor- in the world is to give you that completeness in Christ. Now that word complete, it's, it's uh, uh, one of several words in Greek Pleroo is one, one fullness, right? Complete is is uh, 
from Telios, it's in the end, right, completed. When we say that a, a rose is perfect, we mean that we can't do anything else to make that rose more beautiful. It's at the very end of its perfection. It's not going to grow any more perfect, right? And uh, that's why our past tense in English grammar is called the perfect tense, right? Because it was done in the past. It's not going to not going to uh, change at all, right? It's as full as it's going to be. And it's still true now when we talk about the perfect tense or the aorist tense in the Greek, right? It ha it was true and it happened in the past, and it still has a lasting result today, right? Like when I say, and that's why we use the perfect tense in English to talk about uh, experience, right? I can say I have jumped out of airplanes. Well, I'm not telling you when I did it, why I did it, or, or how many times I did it. I'm not giving you any exact information. I'm just telling you that I had that life experience at some time in the past. And because of that, I, it's still true today. I'm a paratrooper, right? Even though I had jumped out of an airplane in 30 something years, I'm still a paratrooper. Okay. And, uh, uh, so it happened in the past and it's still true now. Well, the same way we're, we're Christ, you know, we believed in Christ in the past. It comes into the future. It's still ours. We've still got that, that action that Christ did for us. Uh, complete in Christ is our goal. We want to be filled up with our occupation with Christ and the production of God, the Holy Spirit in our life. It should become our motivation in life. We, we're sure we speak of eternal rewards and, and, and we th speak of uh, 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 the, the peace and joy of living in harmony with God here on earth in the midst of all this turmoil that the devil's turning up these, turning up these days. But it's, it's for the purpose of, of Christ and it should be our motivation. And that's the other thing that I want you to start looking at in our lives, in your own life, is not just the production of the fruits of the Spirit, but what motivated you to do that? Was it anger? Were you mad at somebody? And you said, well, uh, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm really mad at that person, so I'm going to uh, uh, avoid that person and not see them. Well, I'll, I'm, I must be exhibiting the fruit of the Spirit because I showed some self-control there. No, you didn't. You made self-control in your life because your motivation was avoid anger, right? And uh, uh, the motivation shouldn't be just the avoidance of, of that sin, but it should be your occupation with Christ. Because Christ died for that person as well as me, I'm not going to manifest anger. I'm going to follow the Spirit and, and, and manifest self-control and gentleness and, and see if I can get through the situation without punching someone, okay? That's always a sign of, of, of trying to be in the Spirit. You didn't punch somebody, okay? Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's certainly been my guide a few times. Uh, uh, let's see. I did not punch that guy in the nose. Uh, so, uh, uh, and this is what we want as pastors for everyone that studies on, under us to become more complete in Christ, motivated by, as well as exhibiting their relationship with Christ in their life. That's the quiz from our verse of the day, our scripture reading for today. What did it say in Philippians? That God, the Holy Spirit, is at work in you both to do th two things. Anybody remember what those two things were? Both to will and to work according to his good pleasure. To will is your motivation, the thing that drives you, right? Your will is what you are going to do. That's the thing that's driving you. And that's what God, the Holy Spirit, number one thing that God, the Holy Spirit is doing inside of you is making you want, will, to do what pleases God. The second thing is, and work. Now that isn't human works that he's talking about. He's talking about the production of God, the Holy Spirit. You gotta, you gotta be motivated by God, the Holy Spirit to reflect Christ. And you gotta be empowered by God, the Holy Spirit to do the work that, that glorifies Christ in your life. And we want more and more people glorifying Christ so that more and more people want Christ in, in their life. 
And so that's the completeness that we seek as believers. That's the only way that we can grow because our, our, our delivery from the penalty of sin can't make us grow. We're, we're, it's a done deal. It happened in the past. It's true right now. I'm never going to be more forgiven. I'm never going to be less forgiven as, as well. I'm forgiven because of the work of Christ in my faith acceptance of it. And, and, uh, uh, so how then can we grow and become more perfected, more mature or more complete in Christ? It's letting God, the Holy Spirit work in us through our faith to change the way our motivations in life and seek to do the things that God, we know God, the Holy Spirit wants in our lives. Okay. So, um, um, so that we may present every man complete in Christ, verse 29 from our passage, for this person also I labor, striving. He's working real hard? No, according to his power, God's power. That's God, the Holy Spirit, and which works, which mightily works within me. So he's, he's doing the same thing he's telling them to do, right? He's relying on God, the Holy Spirit, who is working in him to teach them about the relationship that they have with Christ. All right. This, so, uh, the second passage that we're going to look at this morning is in, uh, uh, Titus chapter two, the book of Titus chapter two. Now, uh, we have, uh, uh, so we'll go ahead with Titus chapter 2 and verse 11, if you would. Um, these are Paul's words to Titus and, uh, and part of the uh, 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 pastoral epistles that we studied a year or so ago. Um, verse 11 says, For the grace of God has appeared. That's Jesus. He's been here at this point. Bringing salvation to all men. 12, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age. Holding on there for a second. Do you see there in that statement, there's two parts of it. There's will and work going on here. Just as we said uh, from the um, uh, Philippians passage. Uh, it uh, Instructing us to deny ungodliness. That's anything that is not of God, right? Is sin. That's ungodliness. We tend to think of big sins, you know, like uh, adultery and fornication and and uh, dancing with girls who do and things like that. Um, but it's it's anything that is not of of God. It's it's as much ungodliness for a person to pursue a relationship with God in their own power as it is to deny God and, and, and live as a hedonist. There's not one iota of difference in the sinfulness in God's eye. They're both unrighteous. So, and we must want to, we, we want God, the Holy Spirit to teach us to deny ungodliness, to see where we're not following God's grace plan and doing the work ourselves or not producing uh, the fruits of the spirit deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly be smart about your life people <laughs> live sensibly uh, uh, don't don't overspend and put yourself in trouble don't don't do things that are, are going to make you cry out to God for help because you're doing it to yourself right when, when when we have things that happen to us that are beyond our control, we can cry out to God then. We we haven't done anything that wasn't sensible. We just got sick or we just uh, got, you know, got hit by a bus or whatever. We weren't looking for it. Um, um, but uh, that's when we go to God and, and, and seek his help. But when we get ourselves in trouble, we'll still go to God. But uh, uh, why did you have to? You could have avoided that, that cry to, of her help by not doing uh, uh, being the, the uh, making sensible choices in your life. Uh, looking for the, uh, uh, excuse me, and to live sensibly, righteously, only one way we're going to be righteous and godly in this present age. You can even take it as righteously and godly is salvation one. I've got righteous by believing in Christ and salvation two, 
I act or be, I am godly because of God, the Holy Spirit, working through me. Okay, uh, in the present age, here in this day and time. Verse thirteen from Titus two, looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of glory. Blessed hope and appearing uh, of our of the glory of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus. Uh, one second before we define Christ Jesus there. A lot of people look at this passage and say, keep looking up, the rapture's coming, okay? But it's not talking about the rapture here. It says that uh, uh, we are looking for two things, blessed hope and the appearing. Those are in the, those are accusatives, okay? Those are the things that that the that we're looking for in in the Greek language. Those are the two only two things tied to the action of looking for something. We're looking for the blessed hope and the appearing. What's the appearing? This big genitive phrase that comes after it is defining the appearing, okay? The the thing that we we want to see appear is the glory, that's the object of the appearing, the glory. Who, where does the glory come from? Our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus. It's not talking about the rapture. It's talking about you and I revealing Christ in the devil's world. When you live, when, when God the Holy Spirit wills and works in your life, you, are, you become a light to the world, our, our scripture re reading says. You're the appearing of the glory of Christ in the devil's world. Don't blame it on the rapture. Rapture is not a problem-solving device, as Herman taught one time. I love that line. Uh, it's, it's not a call for, for the rapture, although that is great hope and comfort in our lives. It's a call for what God wants to do in your life. When? In this present age from our context, right? Right here and now, not in the next age, not at the, not in the, in the uh, watershed period between, not in the next blessed event, but right now in this present age, we want the appearing of the glory of Christ Jesus, our Lord in our lives. Who, Christ Jesus, who gave himself for us to redeem us from every lawless deed buys back from the penalty of sin and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, zealous for good deeds. Motivation. Motivation. Zealous for good deeds. You want, you got to want the production of God, the Holy Spirit in your life. You can memorize Galatians 5, 9. You can memorize it better than me because obviously he's a cheat sheet. Thanks for pointing that out, Julie. Uh, but uh, <laughs> we, we, uh, it, it doesn't matter if you know them if you don't want them, right? You can memorize the verse. You can quote it all day long. You can try to mimic them in, the, in your own power, but it's not going to help until God, the Holy Spirit, brings it about in your life, okay? So, but it's a good marker for us when we see uh, uh, things going on in our life that are opposite of God, the Holy Spirit's work and desire to work in our life. We know our faith is in the wrong place and we need that to be corrected. We have to do that prayerfully. We have to go to God the Father. We have to remember that we are saved from the penalty of our sin. And we have to desire the thing that God, the Holy Spirit, wants to be done in our life. That way, Then it's going to be so easy to do that. Nope. <laughs> Often is not. Uh, but we have the power to do that. And we have the power to do that correctly, not of ourselves, but of the work of God, the Holy Spirit. So, and we have to be zealous. We have to want that. We have to desire that. And we can get that, that motivation from God, the Holy Spirit, who is at work in us. Okay. So that brings us to our main passage for today in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, um, uh, 13. Second Corinthians. Corinthians. Oh man. Do you know that?
uh, probably half of the uh, uh, epistles are about Corinth, Corinth, the city of Corinth, because we have uh, uh, First and Second Corinthians. That's the letter to Corinth, but that's where Timothy was. Timothy was sent to Corinth, and so when we see the poly, the the, the uh, pastoral epistles in First Timothy and Second Timothy, they're talking about Corinthians there for most for most of that book. He doesn't always say the church of Corinth. He talks about the church universal often as because he's giving instruction for pastors in general. Titus also w- went through Corinth because uh, he was uh, kind of Paul's go-to guy. Paul sent Titus all over the place, sent him to Crete, sent him to Corinth, sent him to uh, Macedonia. Wherever uh, a church needed to be whipped into shape, Paul would send Titus there often. So at least five whole books of, in, in the New Testament in the epistles are written about the, the, the church in Corinth. So there's some, some wild stuff going on in Corinth, both good and bad. And, and it becomes a, the, the poster church for the church age because we see so many instances there. And um, this is the uh, wrap up of Second Corinthians in chapter 13. And we're going to uh, go through uh, a lot of this, uh, hopefully the whole chapter. I'm not going to uh, uh, drill down an exegesis on most of it. Got a couple of words we need to talk about, though. So 1 Corinthians chapter 1. This is the third time I am coming to you. Every fact is to be confirmed by the mis- testimony of two or three witnesses. I have previously said when present the second time, And now, though absent, I say in advance to those who have sinned in the past and to all the rest as well, that if I come again, I will not spare anyone. Okay. He is, uh, um, has been accused earlier in the, in the book of, uh, um, they said, oh, he's, he's real tough. He's real tough when he, when he writes us a letter, but when he shows up, he's, he's not a good speaker and he's, he's timid and meek and, and, uh, uh, we much prefer this other pastor and, and a lot of controversy going on a, about uh, Paul himself from the church in Corinth. Now, remember what happened uh, what, uh, to two people in the church of Corinth when we studied Timothy. Um, um, Paul said uh, accord, uh, about those two, I've turned them over to the devil, Okay. This is the uh, an express power that Paul uh, says a couple of times in his letters and writings. It's and it's apparently a, a, a an option for an apostle, not for uh, a, a lowly pastor teacher in the church age. Or boy, there'd be some toasty rear ends out there. I have to turn, turn them loose. But uh, uh, he says when he comes th- this next time, and, and the Old Testament says that. A, a crime is, is brought up. You have to have two or three witnesses, or no charges are going to be made. It's that's the the level of jurisprudence from the Mosaic law. And what, so his witness is the word that he's given them on two other occasions. And he said, the third time I come up there, it's going to be no more, Mister Nice Guy. <laughs> okay, and uh, uh, so. He's letting them know that he has the authority and he's reminding them that he has uh, 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 told them the truth. He's admonishing them. Saw that earlier, right? Admonishing them, reminding them of the truth of the word of God that he knows they've been taught. He knows that they knew it at one point because they became believers. So uh, he's uh, bringing them back to, to salvation and reminding them that uh, they have the information they need to lead, live godly lives. And uh, uh, that's what he expects from them. Uh, picking up at verse 3. Since you are seeking for proof of the Christ who speaks in me and who is not weak toward you, but mighty in you. Okay, here, here we see will again coming up. He sa- they, they say, he says, since all, you are seeking for. This is uh, uh, zeteo, and, and it's to seek in order to find something specifically, um, uh, to seek, figure out something by thinking, meditating, reasoning, or uh, uh, inquiring into it. 
uh, to, to strive after or to uh, aim for something. These are from the lexicon, I'm sorry. And, uh, uh, and to demand of someone, to crave or demand from someone something. These, are, these ideas are all bound up in zeteo, which is uh, translated here, you are seeking for. Proof of the Christ who speaks in me. Uh, and who was not weak towards you, but mighty in you. So it's in part a, a, a comment on what they were saying about him earlier in the in the book of Corinthians, that he is weak when he comes to them, but, but hard when he writes a letter. He's telling him that he has the real power, and the real power is found in God, the Holy Spirit. And and uh, uh, if they, and they are seeking to find they have to have that desire from God, the Holy Spirit, to find the thing that they're looking for. Proof of the Christ who speaks in him and who's not weak towards you, but mighty in you. For indeed, he was crucified because of weakness. That's the sin that is, as uh, 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 born, we bear. Uh, he was crucified to pay the penalty of that. Yet he lives because of the power of God. He was resurrected because his work was efficacious. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Martha as Paul's power venue just referred to is is that figurative or literal? Is uh, Paul's? Uh, it's that next it's verse four. Verse in verse four. I mean, no. or verse three. Yeah, three. Mighty in you. Yeah, but mighty in you. Yeah. That's the power of God, the Holy Spirit, that right. God, that Paul wants to see working in them. So she asked, is it figurative or literal? Uh, it's 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 literal strength of God. Now it's not um, Samson all of a sudden. And that would would you'd be by figurative, but literally we want the power of God, the Holy Spirit, at work. Okay, uh, um, these people say, okay. Paul give us the information that's going to make us mighty. He taught them about salvation. He convicted them of sin. They see their weakness, but they want to see the power of God going on. And he's telling him that uh, 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 they're seeking the right thing when they want to see, be mighty in Christ. And he reiterates in four what Christ did for them in the delivery from the power uh, penalty of sin, yet he lives because of the power of God, for we are also weak in him, yet we will live with him because of the power of God directed toward you. Because that, there's the mighty work, right? That we have the uh, assurance of the payment for the penalty of sin in our lives, and, and we have the blessing of knowing that Christ will rise, raise us up after, after death, just as he rose up Christ. Okay. So, it's, uh, uh, we live with him, but we will, will live with him because of the power of God directed toward you. Verse five. <coughs> test yourselves. Here's that test I promised you. Test yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves, or do you not recognize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you? Acknowledge that Jesus Christ is in you because of, of the work of God, the Holy Spirit, right? Do you not recognize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you fail the test? Both will and work, right? Right? We now have a, a two sided, a, a two sides of our, our test to see, are we in the power of God, the Holy Spirit? Is God willing, helping us to want to produce the power of God, the Holy Spirit in our life? And if our faith is there and we have the desire, God, the Holy Spirit is gonna do this. He says he's going to do it just as sure as he said he was going to save us in the Old Testament and did it in the New Testament. Just as sure as we can rely on our salvation, we can rely on the fact that God, the Holy Spirit, is is at work to will, or, or is, is in us to both will and work according to his good pleasure, that, that we may do the works of God. And that's indeed great power that... Uh, um, um, and it's apparent in our lives. Test yourselves. Examine yourselves. 
Look at your production of your life. If you don't see the fruits of the Spirit, if you don't want the fruits of the Spirit, you need some prayer time. <laughs> you need to study the Word to find out where that motivation is. You need to think about the great things that God has done for you to redeem you and 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 help let that help motivate you to glorify Christ in your life and how Christ glorifies you in his life, right? Once you want them and desire them, you search for them in your life or those fruits of the spirit, they're going to make motivate you to do the things that God wants you to do. If God doesn't, doesn't, um, uh, once you, if you say, gosh, I don't want to do, I don't want to do that thing. Um, uh, uh, and you, and you think about it and you say, well, like, I, I don't want to help the, the neighbor that I know recently got sick. I don't like that neighbor very much. And, uh, uh I don't ever already talk to him anyway, but now I find out they were sick and I know that God, the Holy Spirit should be, making me offer at least some help. If they need it or not, I should at least say, is there something I can do and help them out if, they, if they're that bad, poor, poor off or bad off, right? If we don't seek, if we're not looking for the outcome of, of the fruit of the Spirit, it's easy for us to say, I don't like them anyway. Well, what's the motivation there? Sure is in love. Sure isn't wanting to glorify Christ. It sure isn't wanting to do what God wants us to be, what God wants us to be, a light in this world of darkness. So we can use this, this test of the fruits of the Spirit and what we want in our life to see if our faith is in the right place. And the Word of God, we study the Word of God to help us remember all that God has done through for us through the ages and what all, the, all that God has promised to do for us in the future. And most of all, what God is promising to do for us right now. And what he's promising for us is that his spirit will glorify Christ in our life. That his spirit will demonstrate the character of Christ in our life. And that will be the light that the world needs. Uh, but I uh, trust you realize... Uh, uh, unless indeed you fail the test, verse six. But I trust that you will realize that we ourselves do not fail, do not fail the test. Now we pray to God that you uh, that you do no wrong, not that we ourselves may appear approved, but that you may do what is right, even though we may appear unapproved. I don't care what your appearance, what your thought of me is, whether I'm approved of God or not. I don't care about that opinion. What I care about is examine yourself. I want to see it in you, okay? And if I mess up, that's between me and the Lord. But you need to be working on your, your completeness in Christ. Uh, and, and, and he starts off with saying, now, I am doing this right, but if you don't think I am, it doesn't matter. You need to do it right, okay? Uh, for uh, uh, That we may be, uh, appear unapproved. Verse 8, for we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. You can't work against the truth, <clears throat> not the real truth. Now, there, there's a, a whole, a whole uh, uh, section of our society working against truth out there these days. Uh, uh, you, you cannot, uh, can't see a news story. On, you watch the national news. They're going to give you, say, six news stories. They're going to pin global warming on at least three of them. Okay. And, and that's the agenda, uh, that, that, uh, the environment is, is got to drive all the changes that we need for sustainability. And, and we're going to make all the rules that we need to make that happen. And anything that isn't that is wrong, right? Their whole truth is around this, this driving this agenda. And, uh, whereas for us, the whole truth is, God is right and we are not, right? The only way we can get right with God is through God's rules. And that's the truth. And it's black and white. You, you, uh, you can't do anything against the truth. You can't change that. God is right and we are not, right? And, uh, uh, and the only thing we can do is want to be like God, right? That's the only way we can have a relationship with him. It's completely binary, Right? Either you're with God or you're not. And if you're not, 
you're lost. Okay. Verse nine. <coughs> For we rejoice when we ourselves are weak, but you are strong. This we also pray for, that you be made complete. The same thing we saw in our, our previous passage, that they he wanted to, uh, to see uh, uh, completeness in Christ. That was in the uh, Titus passage. I didn't write a footnote for myself. Uh, oh, no, it was in the, in the uh, Colossians passage. Uh, that we may present every man complete in Christ, right? Same, same idea, complete in Christ. Um, that you may be made complete. Trying, striving for 100% reliance on God, the Holy Spirit, and the glorification of Christ in your life. Now, Paul himself says of himself that he never makes, he doesn't make it. He says to himself, not that I'm telling you I'm completely full, mature. He, he, he states that fully, but I'm still trying. I'm still working for it. That's our, our goal. We're probably never going to hit that sinless perfection, but our goal is to be motivated by God, the Holy Spirit, to produce the works of God, the Holy Spirit. That our actions in all that we do in life should be motivated by glorification of Christ. Okay, And that you uh, be made complete. Ten, for this reason, I'm writing these things while absent so that when present, I need not use severity in accordance with the authority which the Lord gave me for building up the church. Not tearing it down. I don't want to wipe you all out. I want you to be a good church. <laughs> Finally, verse 11, brethren, rejoice. Be happy. And uh, be made complete. Be comforted. Comfort, O Israel, right? Be comforted. Be like-minded. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. That's the uh, Middle Eastern practice of a peck on each cheek, right? The holy kiss. Uh, let's see. Uh, all the saints here greet you there. Okay. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Friends, God has given us such a, a simple, straightforward plan to live by. And, and here we see there's... Two sides to the test that we're taking, that we should be giving ourselves all the time, examining our lives. Examine both your motivation as well as the outcome. The outcome should look like Christ, love like Christ loved. By this, they will know you are my disciple, the Lord said in, in John, that you love one another, right? Love each other like he loved us. And that's the, the goal and and uh, to do more and more in our lives, that it might be complete. Fill us up. Make us mature. All right, then. So, easy thing to do. Go out and do it this week, okay? Let's close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace, for your blessings, for all that you give us to live a life in Christ. Heavenly Father, make us more and more complete in your Son as we go through our week. We pray that your Spirit would uh, will in us, work in us, strive with us. Help us to look for your fruits in our lives. Help us to gain those fruits as we rely on him. Heavenly Father, we pray that we may always be mindful of the glorious work of your Son for us and in our lives, how it permeates us each and every day. And may that love be, real, be alike to others, that we may have opportunity to give the gospel, that we may comfort a brother who is down, that we might uh, demonstrate the love of Christ in our lives and glorify him. Heavenly Father, we ask all these things for his sake, for he's worthy of all glory, and it's in Christ's name that we pray, sir. Amen. Thank you.